Hello everybody, I think I am live. Hopefully you can see me well. So hello everybody, welcome to this special webinar we are doing for the movie day that is going to be tomorrow. And basically today we are going to have a look at some of the basic concepts of Movit and basically how to create a Movit package from zero. We are going to do, to do it from zero, everything. I'm going to be doing it with you live so that you can see all the steps. And uh, you can do that, the same steps that I'm doing from your computers. And yeah, so... Hello. <laughs> Hello again. Okay, so, so yeah, let's start. Let's not lose uh, any time because there are many, many things to talk about. So let me share with you my screen. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, we're going to start from the Robotic Night Academy here. Then the first thing I will do is to give you access to all of you. So I'm coming, I'm going to come here to the team management and I'm going to generate here a public link, which I'm going to share with all of you. Now in the, sorry, in the chat, there we go. Okay, let me come here and paste it to the chat. There we go. So now all of you have to click on this link and accept the license that I'm sharing with all of you. And instantly you will have access to our academy, to all of the courses. So uh, let me know if uh, everything works okay. I'm going to wait a few minutes so that you, uh, all of you start clicking and getting your licenses. And let me know if everything is working fine. Meanwhile, I'm going to start loading my, my course here while all of you are getting the licenses. Okay, so we are going to open the ROS manipulation in 5 days course. I'm going to start it so that it's uh, starting to load. Let me see comments. Hello, I have an arm ready to go. Okay, so you are already in the, inside the course, Panagoitis. I think he means that he has a robotic arm. Ah, a real one, you a mean? A real one, I think. Oh, that, that's awesome. Then you will be able to apply what we are going to do now to your robotic arm. Okay, so for now I'm not seeing any comments, so I'm going to assume that everything is going right. So I will keep going and I will be checking um, anyways the chat in case anyone is having some problems or some doubts. So remember uh, very quickly, I have shared here a link. So all of you have to click on it. And when you click on this link, you will get the license and then you will be able to enter uh, any course of the academy. But uh, today we are going to focus on the ROS manipulation course, ROS manipulation in five days. It's, uh, okay, I see Mikel Larrea who asked which is the course. So the course is ROS manipulation in five days. This is the course. And specifically we are going to start from the uh, create, creating a movie package unit. So you can come here to the to the unit selection and come to the create a movie package, which is, which is the number three. Can you indicate how to reach So I have here Ricardo to support me. <laughs> so let me open here 
another screen. So when you, whenever you are here and you have accepted your license, then you come here. You can come here to the courses uh, here in the left panel, or here expand it with CO, whatever you want. And then in the whole list of courses, you have to come to the ROS manipulation in five days, which is this one, and click on start course. Yeah. Then the main the main window of Robotic Net Academy will will open, which is this one. And then you have to come here to the uh, unit three, create, creating a Mubit package. This is the one we are going to start from. You see here that my simulation is loading in this uh, very nice scene. Let me check the comments. Okay. Um, yeah, so Abraham here, uh, yeah, you have to log in to the academy. If you don't have an account, then you have to create it. It's just a few minutes and it's free. So yeah, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes here, well, a few minutes here so that every, everyone starts arriving here. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to come here to the basic concepts unit. You, you don't have to come here, but I'm going to do a quick here overview. So basically, uh, what we are going to be doing uh, today is um, how to create a moving package from zero. First, we are going to do it with this robot, which is a U universal robot with a shadow hand here from Smart Grasping. Um, First, we are going to create the package, then we are going to connect the package to the real robot, which in this case, it's the simulated one. But if you have a real robot, you will be able to apply the same to your real robot. But here, for practical reasons, we are going to do it with the simulation. Then also, we are going to repeat the whole process with another robot, in this case, with a fetch robot from fetch robotics. We are going to create as well a movie package in order to control the robotic arm of the fetch robot. Then also we will be uh, seeing how to add perception to that in order to be aware of the environment and to avoid obstacles um, and everything. And also, finally, we are going to uh, create a small program that will interact with Mubit, a Python script that will, uh, yeah, so request for a motion plan and then execute that plan. So basically that's what we are going to be doing today. Everything is step by step. So let me do a, another check to the chat. Okay. Okay, so I think we are okay to start. It's unit three. We are going to start from unit three. Here, creating a movie package. Okay, yeah, so let's start. So first of all, what is Mubit? 
Well, Mubit is a framework which basically allows us to perform motion planning. And what does motion planning mean? Well, basically is um, is like the navigation of robotic arms, let's say. So let's imagine that we want this robotic arm to go from a starting position, which in this case is this one, to another position, which for instance could be here uh, next to this ball, so that it can uh, catch this ball with the hand. Yeah. So how can we know how to go from this starting point to the desired goal? So this imp implies a lot of calculations, of kinematics uh, equations, and all of this is what is handled by MoveIt. So MoveIt allows us to, given an initial position, set a goal position, and then MoveIt will do all the calculations, all the equations, will take charge of everything, and will uh, perform a motion plan, the best motion plan to come from a starting point to the end goal. Yeah, so basically this is what MoveIt uh, gives us, which is something super powerful, because otherwise it would be very complex, as you might imagine, because there are many uh, joints, links involved, there are many things, many calculations, so having MoveIt that does all of this for us is a huge, huge thing, yeah? And, okay, so let's let's start. Let's start creating a MoveIt package. So, oops. Okay, so I'm going to be following here um, this notebook, which is uh, explaining the step by step. So in case you get lost, remember that I am following this uh, notebook. So the first thing that I'm going to do in order to create a moving package for this arm is to launch the following command, which is uh, uh, this one, ROS launch, move it, set that, setup assistant, setup assistant dot launch. So basically the setup assistant is a program, a graphical program that will uh, help us in the process of creating this movie package because we'll have to configure some things and in order to make it easier, uh, this setup assistant will help us in the process. So let's start it. Then this will start a graphical uh, program, as I've said. Then in order to be able to visualize it, we will have to come here to this button here, which uh, says open graphical interface. Here in the IDE at the top right corner, there is this screen icon here, then you have to click it and this will open a new tab here, which will, uh, will contain the, the graphical interface. And here is where my setup assistant will open. Yeah, so here I have it. Let's, let me make it uh, maximize here the window. So this is the MoveIt Setup Assistant. This is the program that will help us to create our MoveIt package. Yeah, step by step. Then, is everyone here? I hope, yes, everyone is following. Until now, everything is uh, super simple, just uh, a command. And remember to uh, open the graphical interface by clicking on this button here in order to be able to visualize it. Yeah, this is important because later when we have our movie package and we launch it, we will visualize it also here in this graphical interface uh, window. Yeah. Can you explain how would it look into a local computer instead of on the web? Yeah, into a lot of, into a lo local computer, you will you would execute exactly the same command here, and it will just open a new window. Like, let's say, it will op open in, a, in an application, let's say. Mm. Yeah, so here uh, I'm on Windows, unfortunately, so I cannot show it to you. But, but yeah, I mean, you would execute exactly the, the same command 
in your shell uh, if you are working in Ubuntu or well yeah basically in Ubuntu and then it will open in a, an application window Okay, then as you can see here, we have two options, create a new movie package and edit an existing one. So since we don't have any movie package yet, we are going to click on this one. Of course, create a new movie configuration package. So let's click here. And the first thing it, it asks is to load a URDF or Colada robot model. So a URDF is basically a file that defines our robot. Yeah. Then here, we will have to come and browse in our files. Okay, this is a bit laggy. Okay, there we are. Then you can see here that um, in this case, we need this model URDF file, which is located in the shadow DC uh, package. Yeah. Then uh, in order to make the whole process easier, it is recommended to copy this file into our Catkin workspace. Yes, which we have here. Then for doing this, we have here a command that we can execute here in another shell. So here, as you can see, basically I'm doing a copy command, a basic copy uh, Ubuntu command. And I'm copying this URDF file, which is called model URDF, which is here inside the shadow TC package. And I'm copying it to my Catkin workspace. Yeah. Then if I execute this command, I will automatically get here this model URDF file. Yes, you can see it now here in the ID, it's in my workspace. And as I've said before, this file basically defines our robot. So this uh, UR robot with it, with the hand, all, all of this, all the joints, links, connections, the meshes of the robot, everything is defined in this URDF file, yeah? As you can see here, we have all the joins, all the links defined. But well, anyways, this is not a, a, a webinar for explaining your DF file. So just that you know that this file is the basically the definition of our robot. Yeah. Then now we have to load this file into Movit so that Movit knows how our robot is a structure, which joins it has, which uh, links it has, everything. Then we have it here in the Catkin workspace SRC because we, ha we have just copied it here with this command. Then I'm going to select this model URDF file and open it. Then now, when, once we have it here, we will click on load files and this will load this URDF file into the movie setup assistant. And we will see our robot here. We will see our robot appear here. So let's click here in load files and wait a few seconds. Okay, so it has loaded, but this visualizer, okay, there we go. Let me put it here so that all of you can see it. So as you can see now, I have my robot, my UR5 robot with its hand loaded here into the movie setup assistant. So all of you should be able to visualize the arm here. Yeah. So now we have loaded, the first thing, we have loaded our URDF file into the setup assistant. Okay, 
Now we are going to start uh, doing all the configurations. So let me check that everything is fine until now. Okay, I see no comments. So okay, so let's continue. Everything seems to be uh, fine for now. Let me close this. I have opened it before. All right. So, okay. So the first thing, if we come uh, down here, this menu here, we have the self collisions. So let's click here, and this will take us to this uh, this window. And basically, here all we have to do is to click on this generate collision matrix. Yeah. So if we click here, let, let, let's click and see what happens. This will start here uh, generating the default collision matrix. It may take some seconds, as you can see. Let's see if there are any Okay, so Anchor in this case is, is working in his local machine. Okay, so one way you can get your the this model URDF file is you can open here um, view search in Google for instance. You can search for the construct because all these simulations we are using in our courses, everything is open source. So you can search here the construct public simulations. If you click here, you will see here uh, the first link, which says the construct core public simulation. It takes you to a bit bucket. Then you can come here and you will have a list with all our simulations, which are open source. You can use them in your computers, do whatever you want. And here you can search for the, uh, the one which is called smart grasping. Let me, okay, let me find it. It's this one, the Shadow Robot Smart Grasping sand, Sandbox. You click into this, um, into this repository and here you have all the packages and, and files required for starting this simulation, yeah? Then, for instance, this exact same simulation is uh, in order to launch this simulation, you have to uh, launch this launch file from the shadow gazebo package, the main.launch file. Yeah? So if you, if you do a ROS launch, shadow gazebo, main.launch, you will start the exact same simulation that we are using here. And for instance, here you will find the model URDF in the same path that it is stated here. So if you check here, it says that it's in shadow TC, shadow TC, URDF, model URDF. Okay, so. Oh, here we have it, sorry. You come here to a smart grasping sandbox, FH desk, and you have it here, for instance, the model dot URDF. Yeah, so here you have the file. I can, let me, in fact, let me share with you this link. So that you can find it, yeah, and you can you can download uh, you can of course download this simulation and uh, so clone it into your local workspace and compile it. As you can see here, basically we are using this kinetic ROS kinetic with Gazebo Seven, yeah. So this is the version we are using, kinetic Gazebo Seven. So yeah. Let's keep going. Okay, so as you can see here, it has already generated the collision matrix, which we were doing before. And what is this? Okay, so basically here, it has defined uh, many pages of links, as you can see here. This is a quite big list of pairs of links. And what do these this pair, pair of links mean? Basically, are pairs that don't need to be checked for collision, yeah? 
So when Mubit does his planning in order to perform uh, a motion, it does many collision checkings, yeah? Because you cannot move an arm, for instance. You cannot uh, move this hand into this direction because it will collide with this joint, yeah? So all of this, move it has it, uh, it has to, to be aware of this in order to don't collide between the, the joints of the robotic arm, yeah? Then this requires a lot of, of, of calculations, of course. And what does this do? Basically, all of these pairs of links are links that don't require to be checked for these collisions because they will never be in collision, as you can see here. Some of them are because they will never be in collision and so some of them are because they are adjacent links. Yes? So, for instance... Between this link and this link, they are adjacent, for instance. So they don't need to be checked for collision because they are always, they will be always in collision. Yes, because they are adjacent. Or for instance, between this, this one and this one, they will never be in collision because it's physically not possible. Then, basically with this, we are telling that, hey, you don't need to calculate the possible collisions between this link and this one because it's not necessary. They will uh, never collide or they will be always in collision because they are adjacent. So this way we take away many, many uh, calculations that Mubit has to do. And this way we optimize, let's say, this uh, self-collision checking that Mubit performs. Okay, great. So, yeah, let's keep going. So next thing we are going to do is to define a, yeah, so all of this, I'm starting to talk and I'm forgetting to, to keep following here the instructions. So I don't know. Yeah, so here we are doing the self-collision checking. And next thing is to uh, define this virtual joint, which as you can see here, we can call it, we can follow the convention here. So we are going to add a new virtual join. We are going to call it fixed base. The chain link is going to be world. And it's going to be fixed. Okay. Yeah, so. So this is right. Then let's click here on the save button. Oh, sorry. I think it's going to be called, I think we called it world as well. Yeah. Oops. Sorry. Okay. So, yeah, we, we will name it fixed base. Then the chill link and the parent frame are going to be named world. And the joint type is going to be fixed, yeah? You can change here to fix it, floating, planner. In this case, it's going to be fixed because it's not going to move at all. And yeah, let's click here on save and this will create our virtual joint. There we have it. And basically with this, what we are, what we are doing is to add here an imaginary joint, let's say, that will connect our the base of our robot with uh, the simulated world, yeah? So this is big, uh, basically, what we are doing here. Yeah, we are connecting here the base of our robotic arm to the uh, world frame, which is uh, this, the simulated world, yeah? Here. Okay, then let's keep going to more to the more interesting parts. 
So next thing we find here are the planning groups. Okay, so here what we are going to do is to define groups of joints that we are going to use in order to do motion planning. Yeah? Then let's create, let's start here adding a new group, which, whoop, add group. Then we are going to first create one for the arm, which we are going to call arm, for instance. Yeah, arm. Then the kinematic solver, we are going to choose the KDL kinematics plugin, which is a quite default one for this. And um, here in the Opel planning, we can leave none, we can choose one, it doesn't matter really. But here we are choosing the RRT Connect, which is also a default one, but we have many here, depending on the purpose we want to achieve. Ones are better, others are better, ones are more optimized for some kind of motions, etc. For now, we can choose the RRT, for instance, which is a quite uh, also default one. And now we will need to add joints to this planning group. So let's come here to add joints. And as you can see here, we have a list with all the joints of the of this robot. And basically we will need to select the ones that are part of the arm. So, okay, so generally when you define planning groups for a robotic arm, you will define two different planning groups. One is for the arm itself, for all the joints of the arm, and the other will be for the gripper, let's say. In this case, it's a hand, but it can be other kind of grippers. But basically, we will define these two planning groups, yeah? One for the arm and the other one for the uh, gripper, yes? Then this one is the arm, so we are going to select all the joints which are from the arm, which in this case are... Let me come here. Okay, so our shoulder pan, there we have it. Each time we select one, it will get uh, high glided there in in our in our model. Let's select the shoulder leaf. There we have it. The elbow joint, the wrist one, wrist two, and wrist three. So as you can see, we have selected all the ones that are from the arm, and we have left out the ones from the gripper itself. Yeah, so now we click here on this arrow, which is pointing to the right, and all these joints will be moved to this uh, right section, to the selected joints. Now we can click on save here, and as you can see, we have created this new group, which is called arm, and which has these joints here, yeah? Shoulder pan joint, shoulder leaf joint, elbow joint, wrist one, wrist two, wrist three, all these joints are the ones that form this arm planning group, yes? Then, actually for this demo, for this, uh, what, what we are going to be talking uh, today, we could leave it like this, with only the arm, because we are not going to do motions with the gripper itself, we are just going to control the arm and do movements with the arm, because the gripper requires a bit more of detail and it would be too much for a, for a single day. But we are going to create it anyways, so that you see how it would be done. Then we are going to add another group here, which we can call uh, gripper, for instance. The kinematic solver, we are going to leave it uh, with none. And... Yeah, so arm, running groups, Okay, yeah, so here we need to select all these uh, joints, as you can see here. Let's see. Okay, so let's come here to add joints and select all the, they are, okay. So it's, as you can see, this is getting highlighted right there. Let me try to get closer so that we can see better this. Okay. Okay, so there we can see it 
a little bit better. Okay, so basically we need to select all these H1, F1, J1, H1, F1, J2, and H1, F1, J3. That. So the F3, we need to find them somewhere there. Here we have them. F1, F1, F2, and F3. Okay, so I think I have them all. Let me move them to this selected joints place. So yeah. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, so we have them all, excellent. And now we can proceed to save it. Great, so as you can see, we have now our, our two planning groups defined here, one for the arm joints. There we have them highlighted. Excellent. So here we have our arm planning group, which will be, oops, okay, which will be in charge of calculating the motion plans for this group of joints, yeah. And then we have also the gripper planning group, which will be in charge of uh, calculating all the motions of the gripper, yeah, this, the fingers in this case, in this uh, in this gripper that it's hand like, yeah. Excellent, so we have our planning groups defined, let's keep moving. Next thing we have, robot poses. So here basically what we can do is to define some predefined poses that our planning groups can go to, yeah? So let me show you, we are going to come here and add a new pose. Let me, by the way, let me have a look at the chat to see how it's going. Okay, so Abraham was having some problems with the visualization of the URDF at the beginning, I I suppose. Yeah. So with this with this visualization here, right? Yeah, so in fact, when I opened it, uh, the movie that is and loaded the model the first time, um, I don't know if you noticed it, but also I wasn't seeing it. And basically what, what I did was to resize the window and it got solved. So sometimes there are some strange things there. Um, and yes, as, as Ricardo suggested to you, uh, it's also a good practice to restart the application because sometimes there are some books, strange books there, and by restarting the application it works. Also, you might check here, if you are not seeing it, you can check in the in the same web shell where you have launched Movit Setup Assistant, here. So here, as you can see, I'm getting some messages, which most of them are not important. Here in the in the shell, where I have started the movie setup assistant, you will also have a, a neural local machine shell with this. And maybe you can check here here for some comments or some errors that might appear here. So maybe the permissions of your file are not okay, a movie cannot access to it, whatever. You can also have a look here at, uh, at the logs in your shell to see if there's any strange message there. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so um, yeah, let's see if it gets fixed for Abraham and let's keep going. Okay, so as I was, I was saying, uh, here we have the robot poses definition and here we can define predefined poses that our robot uh, will be able to go. So basically this is done if we have some specific poses or positions for the robot that are quite common so that the robot will have to go very often to that position, it's very recommendable to uh, create them here and save them here in the robot poses. Yes, because later we will see that it's very easy to plan, to create plans for these specific poses here. So for instance, let me see which ones we are defining here. Okay, we are going to, we are going to pass on the ones that are defined for the gripper because we are not going to use them. 
So we are going to move directly to the ones that are defined for the wall arm. Here we have it. So in this case we have uh, one which is called start. Okay, yeah, so let's define this one. Let's create one which is called start. And here you have some uh, sliders and you can move them and as you move them you will see that the joints in the robot here in the visual in the visualizer move as well. So as you can see here I can see the joints moving. Yeah? So you can also put here uh, specific values. If you put zero, it moves to the zero position. Then let me see which position it's using here to try to reproduce a similar one. Okay, so for instance, here in the shoulder lift, let me make this uh, higher. In the shoulder lift joint, it's setting minus 1.6. So let's try, for instance, this. Minus 1.6. You can set whatever you want, yeah? But I'm going to use these ones because why not? This way I don't have to impro improvise. So, yeah. So as you can see, this uh, position has made the shoulder leaf joint look up, look to the, to the sky, let's say. Yeah. Then... We can set as well to the elbow joint to 1.8. Let's modify it here. Here, so the elbow joint, I'm going to set it to 1.8. There we go. And and the other ones basically are left to uh, are left to zero. So as you can see here, I'm it's a very basic position. So yeah, this is why we are setting it because it's a very standard position, as you can see. It's like prepared to do something. Um, and it's quite easy to accomplish because most of the joints are set to zero. For instance, if I move now this one, as you can see, I'm moving the joint there uh, that has the gripper attached. But let me put it to zero. So yeah. You can use the same configuration I'm using here. You can create your own as you want, yeah? Then you give a name to these posts. In this case, I've named it start and you have to uh, save it, of course. So let's save it. Let me save it. There we go. So here we have now our uh, start pose yeah and you can add as many as you want so let me call another one uh, nice or nap and we can set this one to zero and zero which is the the position that it has right now as you can see which is like a sleeping, like taking a nap, as you can see here. So I'm going to call this pose nap, and I'm going to set all the all the joints to zero, and I'm going to save it as well. Let's go. Save. So I have now two poses, the start pose, which is the wake up pose. When it comes here, it wakes up, and the nap pose, which it goes back to sleep, yeah? So we have these two poses, the finite, excellent. So what else? Let's keep moving. Well, let me check for a moment the messages, okay. Okay, so nothing new. So let's keep going. Okay, then let's keep going. So the next thing we have are the end effectors. Okay, so again, let's define a new end effector here. So what is an end effector? So basically, it's the, the, let's say it's the, the end of a robotic arm, the final joint of a robotic arm, yes? Then in this case, the end effector, of course, it's very obvious, it will be the gripper, yeah? It's the, the end point, let's say, of the robotic arm, yes? The last joint, the last part of it. So, um, yeah, so for instance, 
for the end effector name, we can call it gripper, gripper, ee, for end effector, for instance, or ee. I don't know who it was, it's named it here. Oh, so here it's named it hand. Okay, yeah. We can name it hand. In fact, I'm going to do a mix. I'm going to name it hand ee to make clear that this is an end effector. Yeah? Then the group for this end effector, uh, it will be the gripper. Yes, because the end effector is in the gripper in this case. And the parent group will be the arm. And the parent link will be the the last link here of the arm of this group, which links to the gripper, which in this case it will be the one we have here at the very end of the arm group, right before we move to the gripper. So let me check here for the name of this specific uh, join link, sorry, which is wrist three link. You can see it here. Okay, so hand, hand, yeah, here it has named the group here. Oops. Okay, so, sorry, I don't know what's happening here. I cannot move, okay. okay so something strange is happening. It's not letting me go up and down, scroll up and down. Okay. Let's try now. Okay. So basically uh, what I wanted to say is that here in the, in this instruction, it, it has named the gripper like hand. I have named it gripper, but it doesn't matter. It's not important. Um, so keep going. Let's keep going here. We were in the end effector. So as you can see here, uh, it has named the end effector group hand, but in our case, well, at least in my case, I don't know who you find, you have named it the planning group for the gripper. In my case, it's gripper. Then the parent link, it's wrist three link, as you can see there, which is the last joint. The wrist three link, it's the last uh, link we have here. Yeah, the last link of the arm planning group, let's say. Then let's save this configuration. Okay, so we have the hand uh, end effector, which is from the gripper planning group. And the parent link is the wrist three link and the parent group is arm. Yeah, so maybe let me show you one second. I don't know if I will be able to show you. Yeah, so let me show you just one second here, this wrist three joint. So as you will see here, it's this one, yeah? So it's the last one which is connected to the end effector. That it's the gripper in this case, yeah? So this is why we set this wrist three link as the uh, end effector parent link, yes? Okay, great. So we have our end effector defined. Then we have some more configurations here which are not necessary. All these specific join, cross control, we are going to pass on all these. And we are going to move directly to the author information. Here we, you will need to fill uh, with some data. It's mandatory, otherwise it won't let you create the movie package. So name of the maintainer, this movie configuration. So here I'm going to name my name. And the mail of the maintainer will be my email email.com yeah then you have to fill here your personal information your name and your email you can put fake ones if you want like it's my case my case because this is not it's just for uh, an example purpose it's not important so i'm putting here that's why i'm putting here my name you can put whatever you want here then uh, let's move to the configuration file which is the last sec the last section and here basically you will generate your package and you will uh, have to choose where you are going to place this package. So in our case, we are going to save it into the Catkin workspace. 
and the source folder and we are going to call it my robot I think it was named like this yeah my robot move it config so my robot move it config um, sorry this is the name I'm going to give to the folder where I'm going to place so here as you can see you have to create a new folder there we go so you create a new folder by clicking on this icon here you give a name to your folder then you select your folder of course there we go and you have here your path home user catkin workspace src and the name of your folder and then you will click here on the generate package so let's go it will start here generating the package very well and configuration packet generated successfully okay great so now we can exit setup assistant and a new uh, movie package will be created here in our workspace as you can see here it has appeared my new move it package yeah okay excellent so let's see let me open here so as you can see you will have uh, basically a semi list and the package xml like every ROS package basically and then you will have here a config folder with some configuration files inside and also a launch folder with uh, many launch files inside yeah we are going to see some of them and to modify some of them and what they mean etc in a moment so yeah great we have our movie package created let's see if there are any comments any problems doubts anything in the chat no okay so no comments no doubts for now so excellent so let's keep moving okay then yeah so now let's launch it let's start it so by default let's keep moving here so by default as you can see uh, i have here a launch file which is called demo.launch yeah so basically this launches some basic movie functionality with fake uh, controllers fake uh, everything so that we can test that more or less everything works as expected so i'm going we are going to launch this uh, launch file yeah control c and control v yeah so you have to execute this command ros launch the name of the package the name you have given to your movie package and you have to select the, this demo.launch file so let's execute this one there we go and uh, at the end it should if everything we if we have done everything properly it will load move it RVs here in our gra graphical interface window so let's wait a few seconds until everything is properly loaded there are so move it is quite huge so it has to launch many different things check and set many different parameters so it takes some seconds to load completely as you can see but it's worth the wait yeah so here it's saying that yeah it doesn't matter for now everything is going properly great so in fact it should start oh yeah so here we have it it's not fully loaded yet now it is i think yeah so as you can see this is Oop, i don't know what happened here hmm. let me go back to my graphical interface window okay there we go so as you can see the window is a bit uh, displaced so for fixing this you can click here in this icon here at the top right corner you click here and you click back 
then here in your in the center of the window or in any place here in the window and this is properly uh, resized so that you can visualize this properly then you can maximize this movie service window and here you can see that we have our UR5 robot loaded with some markers here very interesting things okay excellent so everything seems to be working fine as you can see, everything loaded properly. I can see here my, my, my manipulator robot, my arm. I can see here Ompel with RRT, which was the default planning library we selected while creating the package, if you remember. Anyways, you can, uh, you can modify it here as well. So you can choose any, any you want, any you prefer. And uh, let's see, let me see if everything, everyone, okay. Okay, we do no need of catkin make. No, 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 Mikkel. In this case, it's not necessary to do any catkin make. Yeah. So here, um, we don't have anything to compile, as you can see. So this basically, you need to compile when you have, uh, let's say, source file. Yeah, for instance, C++ files, you will need to compile, but in this case, we only have launch files and configuration files. So basically, this will be launching uh, things that are already compiled. Yes, so whenever this, yeah, of course, this system assumes that you already have the movie packages installed. Yeah, so this, you can do a sudo apt get install for instance let's say ros kinetic move it okay so as you can see here we have many packages movie uh, move it commander with comfy move, move it core controller manager example move it python we have many many packages yeah so when you install in your system all of these packages, you get all the, in this case, they, they are Debian, but you will get all the libraries and everything you need installed. And, this, and then with this movie package, basically what you do is to launch uh, these things that are already compiled. So that's why you don't need to compile nothing here because you are, we are just working with launch files. Okay, then let's keep uh, going. So here we have our movie it started, great. So now we are going to move here to the planning tab that you can see here. And basically here we see some things. We have, we have some options, some parameters that we can tune here, like planning, planning time, planning items, allow replanning, etc. many things, path constraints. But we are going to focus now on this section here. Uh, this query and comments section, which is the which are the ones we are going to focus uh, today. So basically, here you can do uh, three, four things. Let's say, first of all, you have here uh, the select start state. If you click here, you will see that you have a menu here where you can choose some options. In this case, we are going to set here, you can see here the, the poses that we define it while creating the movie package, you remember them? The start pose and the nap pose. But for now, we are going to select current pose. Current pose is the pose at which the robot is right now. Yeah. So as a start state, we are going to select the current pose. Yeah. So the robot is going to start from this pose, which is right now. Okay, so update. I'm setting the start state as current. There we go. And now, once we have done this, we are going to move to the goal state. Okay, so we have defined our start, start position, yeah? Then, which is our goal position, our goal state? Here, as you can see, we have by default the random valid select, selected. So we could set current, for instance, but what happens? If my start state is the current one I'm a, and my goal state is the current one, I'm not... So the arm is not going to move at all. It makes no sense, yeah? So 
As a goal state, you can set, uh, for instance, a random valid position. If you click here on update, this will select to a run. This will update to a random position. You can see. If you click again, it will select. It will update to another random position. There we have it. Let me make this bigger. So as you can see, basically this is uh, picking some random goal positions. Yeah, you can keep moving, and the robot will keep getting different random positions. Yeah, or what else? What other option you have? For instance, we can select one of the poses we have defined while creating our movie package. For instance, let's if we click here on the start. You, do you remember how the start position was? It was like this. If you click here on update, the robot will go to the start position, which is this one. Yeah. So what are we doing here? Do you remember how we started this webinar? We started by defining what a motion plan is. Motion, a motion plan is basically the movement of a, of a manipulator, of a robot arm, from a starting point, from a point A to a goal point, to an end point, to a point B. Yeah, It's a process of going from this uh, point A to this point B. Yeah, Then here, in 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 light orange then here in light orange we have in this case it's the goal position and here in a more faded uh, shape as you can see here like kind of uh, transparent here we have the starting position yeah so this this uh, transparent is the starting position and this orange one is the goal position. Then, what is the main functionality of moving? Of move it to calculate the best motion, the best trajectory from this starting point to this end point. And how do I do this? How can I um, ask move it to do this? Well, it's as easy as coming here and saying, "Hey, plan." So once you have set the starting state. And the goal state, the final state, you come here and say, hey, move it. Run a, tra a trajectory for me. I don't want to do anything. Then you wait a few seconds, and there you have it. Here you have move it. Move it has already calculated the best trajectory in order to reach this goal state. And not only this, but it's showing us this trajectory. So as you can see, we have here our robot. We have uh, a motion. We can see here visually. We can visualize this motion, how it is going to be, step by step, as you can see here. So this is uh, amazing. Yeah. So with a simple click here, Move it has done all the calculations, and it's showing me, hey, the best way in which you can reach this goal position is this motion. Amazing, yeah? Okay, and then here we have the execute button. Let's click it. So now, Movit is showing me the plan. He's saying, hey, I have calculated this plan and I'm showing it to you. What do you think? And I say, okay, I like it. Let's execute it. And then I will click here and the robot There we go. And the robot will start moving to that uh, goal position. Yeah? But what happens? So at this point, basically at this point, okay, so yeah, we are working now here in Movie Therapies and we have planned the best uh, motion and we have executed it. But what happens here? That our robot has not moved at all. Yeah. Why? Well, because we we haven't connected yet our movie the package to our current robot, to our real robot. In this case, it's to our simulated robot. Yeah. So until now, so here we are just working at a let's say at a at a move it level. Yes. We are not yet applying all this to our simulation. Then. 
So this is very nice to see that everything is working fine, to test our moving package, that it can uh, calculate motions, and to check that everything is working uh, as it should. But of course, this would, wouldn't make any sense if we cannot control our robot with this, yeah? So this is exactly what we are going to do next. Then, okay, so at this point, let's close this launch file. And let's, okay, yeah, so again, I have started talking and I haven't paid any attention to a notebook, but you have everything explained here. Maybe some things are different because I'm talking and, and some things are the names or, or something are, is different, but well, the idea is the, exactly the same. Then, okay, here, moving the rear robot. Okay, so now, okay, super nice. So move it is amazing, incredible, how it calculates the motions and we can visualize it in real time. It's super nice, but hey, I want to move my robot. So how I do this? Okay, so now we will need to do some modifications and add some extra files in order to achieve this. So the first thing we are going to do is to create a file in order to define the controllers of our robot. In this case, it's the simulated robot, but it would be exactly the same for a real robot. So let's do this, let's create this file. Here in, the, in our config folder inside the movie package, we're going to create a new file Let's create it here, new file, and I'm going to call it controllers.yam. Excellent. And I am going to copy and paste this content, and now I'm going to explain a bit, uh, a little bit what is this. Okay. So I have created this controllers file and uh, I have filled it with this. Okay, so what is this? Let's see. So, as you know, as you may already know, this simulation is running with ROS, yeah? So this manipulated robot is controlled through ROS. Then, ROS has a tool which is called ROS control, which is used to uh, yeah, to basically control the joints of a robot, to send commands to the robot in order to perform things, to perform uh, actions, yeah? Then, here, hopefully all of you have a basic understanding of ROS, because now I'm going to be going a bit fast in some basic concepts, so for instance, in topics, I hope all of you know what are topics, Anyways, if, if you don't understand some of my explanation, you can uh, ask me in, in, in the channel and I will clarify to you. But I'm going to, to, to skip some basic concepts in order to, be, uh, uh, to go a bit faster. Okay, so in order to visualize the topics of this robot, we can execute this command, ROS topic list. Then here, we can see uh, many different topics. But, so for instance, here we have some topics for the camera, or these topics are re related to this Kinect camera that we have here. So here in the simulation we have this Kinect camera, as you can see. Super nice. Okay, so um, we can read the information about this camera here through the camera, uh, this, all these camera topics. But basically, the most important ones uh, for now, for move it, are this one. So as you can see here, we have a set of topics which start with the namespace arm controller. Yeah. And also we have many more here which start, which start with the namespace hand controller. So basically, as the name of the topic itself says, all these topics are used in order to send commands to the hand of the of this manipulator to the gripper of this ma manipulator yeah to this uh, from here Yippa. okay there we go let me come closer there we go okay yeah 
So all, all these topics that start, that start with the namespace hand controller are used in order to send commands to this hand, to this robotic hand, to this gripper, yeah? And these topics here that start with the arm controller are the ones that are used in order to send commands to the arm, to the rest of the of the joints of the robot, yeah? The, all these uh, joints that we defined previously in the moving package as the arm planning group. So all these joints that we have here are controlled through these topics here, yeah? The arm controller topic. Arm controller follow joint trajectory. So basically these are actions, these are rows actions that are, allows us to send commands to both the arm, which is this, and to the hand. Yeah, then basically what I'm doing here is to tell this to move it. So I'm saying, I'm, I'm telling to move it, hey, if you want to control this robot, you have to talk with these topics. Yeah, then the basic name of this topic is arm controller. As you can see, here we have arm controller. Yes. Then the namespace of this action is follow joint trajectory. You can see it here. Follow joint trajectory, yes? So the name is our controller. This is the main name. Then the namespace of the action is follow joint trajectory. And the type this uses is follow joint trajectory, this one. How I can know this? Whereby doing a ROS message show. ROS message show of, uh, sorry, ROS topic info. If I check information about this topic, ROS topic info, arm controller, follow joint trajectory. If I do, uh, sorry, let me just add here a goal for instance. Okay, so as you can see here, the type this uses is the follow joint trajectory action goal, which if we remove this action goal, because this is specific for the goal topic, for instance, if we check here the feedback one, it will uh, have action feedback, yeah? So we can um, forget about this and we, take this, which is the follow joint trajectory. This is the type of these topics. And as you can see, it's the type that we are specifying here. Yes? Okay, let me stop right here one moment because things are getting a bit more complicated. So let's see how everything, okay, so no questions for now. Okay, so either you are understanding everything super well which which would be talking very good about me because that means that I'm explaining very well or either you have you are you, you have already diet or or you are having heart attacks or something I don't know well anyways hopefully you are all okay and you are following the explanations I will keep going for now so yeah as you can see here basically what we are defining is we are telling move it how he can talk with the simulated robot or how he can talk with the real robot. Yes? So if you, okay, let's come here again. Yes, so we define the name, which is arm controller, then the namespace, which is follow joint trajectory. As you can see, this is common for all these topics, which are the topics of the action. All, all the actions in ROS have this uh, structure. They have a cancel topic, a feedback, a goal, a result, and then a status. Yes? This is some uh, ROS basics stuff, which you can learn in, in, in our ROS basics course, for instance, or all of this is explained. But yeah, so this is the basic structure of an, uh, an action. And in this case, we are specifying that this specific action, the one that it's named arm controller and follow your trajectory, and which uses this type of message, this is the one that is going to uh, allow us to control these joints. 
Do you remember these joints? Are they familiar to you? These joints are the ones we defined when we created the arm planning group. Yeah, you remember when you were, we were creating the planning groups that we created one for the arm, another one for the gripper. So the joints we selected for the, for the arm group were these ones. Yes, so basically with this, what I am telling to move it is, hey, in order to control these joints, which are the ones for the arm, all of these, you need to connect to this uh, ROS action, which is arm controller, follow joint trajectory. And it uses this type, yes? Follow joint trajectory type of message. And then we are basically doing exactly the same for the hand, yeah? So for the hand controller, we also have the same structure here, you can see it. The, here we have the ROS action with the cancel, feedback, goal, result, and the status, top, status topics. Then the name in this case is hand controller. We put it here. The namespace is the same one, follow joint trajectory. Here you have it. And the type is the same one, follow joint trajectory. Yeah? And in this case, the joints are this one. Do you remember these joints as well? This is, uh, we, we added these joints where we were creating the gripper planning group. So in order to control these, uh, these joints, you will need to connect to this ROS action, the hand controller, follow joint trajectory, gold. Yeah? In fact, for controlling grippers, there are other actions which are better, like the gripper command, but we are not going to enter into this because too many things. So for now, just remember this, that in this file, you are going to tell Movit how it can control the real robot. In this case, it's the simulated robot, but in case you have a real robot, like there was someone that he was telling at the beginning of the webinar that he has a real robotic arm. So if you have a real robotic arm, it's uh, probably it is running ROS, and if not, it should run ROS, let me tell you. But if it's running ROS, you can connect to your real robotic arm, and you can do a ROS topic list as well, and check the topics, and you will have some topics which are the ones that that you use in order to send commands to your robotic arm and to move it, yes? So, yeah, okay, let's keep uh, going. Let me check the comments if we have any, any, okay, for real robot. No need of cut can make, okay, for real robot, Exp uh, Arduino interface have to talk by these topics to actions. Okay, I'm, I don't know if I'm understanding this question. Okay, so basically this is prepared for, let me explain it uh, basically. Uh, so these topics that I was talking about uh, right now, these actions, here, for instance, this action, the controller action, this is based on this uh, joint trajectory. Joint trajectory controller, here you have it. Let me open it here, so you can come here, for instance, to the Rush Wiki. And here we have the joint trajectory controller, explain it, many things. So basically, this robotic arm is running a joint trajectory controller. This is defined in the in the URDF files of the robot. In, in all these URDF files, uh, is where we define how we are going to control our robot. In this case, this is defined with a joint trajectory controller, which as you can see here, this is basically a... Um, this basically runs under an action Yes. Yeah, so you can see here, this is an, this runs an action, but this, in fact, this is, uh, this go, uh, yeah, this is more, it's a bit different from this. You, you we need to, we need to go to, for real world expansion, the interface have to go by these topics. Okay, yeah. So basically, if you have a, if you have a real robot, 
In order to be able to control it from ROS, you will have to create uh, your DF files and you will have to create some control files. Yes, this is basically ROS control, which are other topics. There are many things here. <laughs> But yeah, ROS control basically is what will allow you to control your robot in order to send commands to, to your robot and to control its joints. And there are many different controllers. You have position controllers, you have effort controllers. There are many, many different controllers. Well, not many, but there are different controllers. In fact, you can learn about this also in our other course, which is ROS Control 101. Here you can learn the basics of this. Let me show it to you. It's here. ROS Control 101, somewhere here. Okay, here you have it, ROS Control 101. Here you will learn the basics of this and how to... the different types, different types of controllers. And there is a, a type of controller, which is this one. It's the Joint Trajectory Controller. Then once you configure this controller to work with your robot, you will have this action available. And you will be able to control your arm through this action. Yes? And then once you have this action running in your real robot, you will be able to directly connect with MoveIt uh, like I am explaining uh, right now. Yes? I have a chip 6 degrees of freedom robotic arm no feedback so in order to use it with MoveIt you need to implement an action server for MoveIt this can be handled with ROS control yeah exactly yeah that's it so Panagoiti is it, it, it's explaining it uh, excellent So you have to configure this. Um, you have to configure your robot to work with this uh, joint trajectory controller, which is the action server that Panagoitis is talking about. And you will have to create also the joint state uh, publisher that will generate your joint states topic, which is this one, which is also very important. We are going to see it in a moment, but here. Besides these topics, we also have this joint states topic, which is the one that is uh, generated with the joint state controller, which is it's also super important. Well, at the end, so Mechatronic Maxima says, if I have a, a robot that's, con uh, that's controlled by Arduino, Arduino has to talk to Ross over a topic or an action. Okay, in, at the end this is the same. So an action is made of topics, yes? So an action, what we call an action under the hood, it's topics at the end, yes? So this, this is a topic, yes? This cancel, this R controller for joint trajectory cancel, this is a topic. Then this one, it's another topic. Arm controller for joint trajectory feedback, this is another topic. This one, which ends in goal, is another topic. This one, which ends in result, is another topic. This one, which ends in a statute, is another topic. And all of them, together, they form an action, yeah? In fact, this is some... some stuff that if you want to... if you want to... to control your robot with ROS, you will have to learn about this. But... but yeah. For instance, you can you can learn all, all this in the ROS basics in five days. This is here we have explained it, uh, how to create an action, how an action works, the different topics, etc. Yeah, but yeah, so you will have to create. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so you will have to create some configuration files. Let me show you, in fact, maybe I can show you here very quickly because I cannot go into much detail. But here, Mm. 
Let me see if I find the proper... Oh no, they, they they will probably be somewhere here. Okay, yeah, well. They come over here. Yeah, so basically you will have to 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 add this joint uh, predatory controller and joint testing controller and basically add ROS control, that's ROSify your robot, let's say. Yes? And let's, let's keep going, then once... Yeah, yeah. Because there are too many things and <laughs> I am going outside the topic. Okay, so yeah, once you have all your robot configured and ROSified, as I've just said, you will have this action and when, when you have this action, you will be able to create the movie package and connect to it, uh, which is basically what we have to, to do now, to do today. Okay, then here we have the finite, uh, the action for the arm, the action for the hand controller, although for this example, we are not going to use the one for the hand, but well, we are going to be using only this one, the one for the arm. So we have this file defined. Great, let's keep going. Yeah, you have all the explanations here as well. Okay, then we are going to create another file which is going to be called joinnames.yam. Let me copy this name and copy paste it to gain some. Yeah, never mind. I'm going to finish faster like this. Okay, so I'm going to create another one which is called joinnames.yam. Great, and let me paste, copy and paste here, because it's pretty simple. Copy and paste, and save, okay, great. So basically here we we are defining the names of the, uh, of all the joints, yes? So here we have all the joints of the, of the arm, the shoulder pan, shoulder lift, elbow joint, wrist one, wrist two, and wrist three, and all of these ones, the H1, F1, the, all of these ones are the ones for the hand. If you remember them, yeah? So yeah, basically here we just have to add all the names of the joints from the arm and from the gripper, yeah? Okay, so this one is pretty simple, not much uh, to explain here. And next one, okay, so now we are going to start touching here, modifying the launch files. So first of all, we have to uh, look for this smart grasping sandbox move it controller manager dot launch dot XML. Let's look for this uh, launch file here in the launches list. Mm, okay. Smart grasping sandbox move it controller manager launch XML. Here we have it, it's this one here. And uh, basically here, what, it, what does it say? Ah, okay, yeah. So here, we need to load our configuration file. So let me make this bigger because otherwise we are not seeing it very well. Okay, so let me copy this here, control C. In fact, here it's loading another one by default. Yeah, so here, okay, never mind. So we can just here, uh, let's remove this and load and paste this. And here, what we are doing is to load the controllers file we have just created, yeah? So as you can see here, we are loading the from the my robot movie config, which is our movie package, we are loading the controllers.yam file that we have uh, created and explained it right now. Yeah? 
So basically we are loading this file into move it. Now let's keep going. Whoop, sorry, I have made I'm used to work with a mouse and now I'm here with the with, with the mouse pad and it's quite complicated for me to move around with this. Okay. And then the next thing is that we are going to create a new line file with this name. Let me copy and paste it. Okay. Copy and create a new line file, which is going to be called my road planning execution dot launch. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Then let's as well copy and paste here the contents. Copy and paste. And let's have a quick look, a very quick look. So basically here we are loading the other file that we have created, which is the joint names, yeah. Yeah, the one we have created here. We are loading this one. And um, we are loading also the planning context launch file, which we have here, which uh, at the same time, it's loading some things that we need, like the URDF of the robot, the SRDF, some limits for the joins, kinematics. Well, basically these are some launch files that Movit needs in order to do all the calculations for the motion plannings. It's loading this planning context, then it's as well here it's uh, starting the joint state publisher. And here, as you can see, this is very important. So here we have to place here the name of our joint states topic. In this case, as we have seen in the ROS topic list, our name is, uh, the name of this topic is joint states, as it is. Yes? So it's correctly set here. But, for instance, maybe you have a name set for your robot, so my arm and and it could be that your joint state topic it's under a, a namespace like this one, for, like this one, for instance, my arm slash joint state. Then you have to put this uh, this topic here into this source list, list parameter. This is very important so that Movit can know at every moment what are the positions of your joints. So basically, this joint is the main purpose of this topic, this joint state topic. We can do our roster pick echo, in fact, very quickly. As you can see. And as you can see, basically, uh, this topic gives us information of the positions of all our joints. Yes? As you can see here. Then this way, Movit can know at each moment which is the position of all the joints of our arm. Yes? And this disjointed state topic it's provided by this uh, joint state controller that Panagoitis was talking uh, right before in the discussion with Mechatronica where we were talking about all these controllers. So the joint state controller is the controller that provides this joint state topic. Yes. And you can recognize it, you will recognize it in any simulation because it always contains these joint states parts. Sometimes it has a namespace before with the name of the robot or whatever, but uh, it will have always this or usually these joint states uh, part, yes? Then, with this, uh, Movit will be able to know the state of our robot, of our emulator. And then basically here we are launching the move group node, which is, is the most important. In fact, in Movit, this is the core of Movit. The move group is what manages everything. It manages all the information and, and 
it, it gets the information of all the structure of the robot from the URDF files, of all the sensors, in case they, there are sensors. Basically, it's the, it's the, it's the core node. It's the, it's the core under move it that runs move it, this move group node. Yes, it has been, you can have a look here as well. Here is where we are launching everything with different parameters, etc. but it's too much to enter into, the, into details right now. So basically, uh, know that this uh, launch file is what is launching the move group node, which is the, the, the core node of Movit. And finally, we are also launching here Movit RVs, which, which is the window that we are visualizing. Do you remember that in the previous example, we were seeing here a window with our robot and we were able to set a start position, our position, so that all that uh, interface is launched with this, with the Movit RVs.launch. Okay, then let's save this file and let's launch it. So again, let's come here to the ROS launch. Let me find the command I used before, ROS launch, my role movie config, but instead of demo.launch, this time we are going to load this my robot planning execu execution. My robot planning execution. Okay, so I'm going to run this file and wait a few seconds to see if it loads properly or if I get any error. Let's hope uh, that everything works fine. Okay, I, uh, I was muted for, for a moment, but I sh you should listen, me, listen, listen to me again now. Let me go to the chat and let's see how this is going. Toby Robot, okay, Rose Control, Boilerplate, Ricardo, thank you, Ricardo, that's right, I'm going to you with my full address. Ah, okay, some things with the t-shirt. Yeah. Okay, so ca can you hear me properly, everyone? And also, have you been able to launch uh, this launch file? This last one we have created. Yeah. In my case, it's it's worked properly. So as you can see, I have been able to, here to launch um, movie service. And I can visualize here my robot. I have it here. Excellent. So everything is working fine. Here my planning library has loaded as well. In my case, everything seems to be working properly. I hope for you it's working properly as well. I cannot see any comments here in the in the chat, but I will assume that everything is okay. Okay, so let's continue because uh, we are going to finish in very shortly. Okay, so... Um, so yeah, so we have again uh, the same screen that we've seen previously, but there is a difference. You will see it right now. So again, let's repeat the process. Let's come to our start state here. Let's update our start position with the current one, which is okay. So our start position will be this one, the one that the robot is at this moment, the current position. 
Then our goal state, let's select, for instance, the start position that we defined previously while creating the movie package. Let's here click on update and we will see here how the goal position is updated. Let's plan. So as you can see, we are following the same steps as before. We define the starting position, we define the goal position, and we plan a trajectory. Here we can visualize this trajectory that Movit has calculated right now. We can visualize it in uh, live. Yeah. So as you can see, this is the trajectory that Movit has calculated for me. And now I can click again on execute. Okay, so I like this trajectory. Let's do it. Let's click on execute. And let's go to a simulation. Hey, what is going on here? So as you can see now, my robot is performing this trajectory. So I have calculated it with move it, and I am applying this motion, this trajectory that Movit has calculated, I am applying it to my robot. Yes? So, in this case, it's to the simulated robot, but uh, as I've said before, as long as you connect your robot, your real robot, to move it through these controllers, yes, through this um, action, you will be able to apply everything you perform in move it to your real robot, as you have seen here, yes? So now, again, I can come back here and say, okay, excellent. Let's update my start position now with the current one. There we go. And let me, sorry, okay. And let me update the goal position with the nap position. Let's go back to sleep again, for instance. Update my goal position again. And let me plan and execute now. I'm going to do it all in one. So plan and execute. Okay, so it's... Ah, yeah. It, it hasn't updated properly my initial position, but let me, for instance... <clears throat> oh, no. Let me get a random one which doesn't look very complicated. No. This one, for instance, it's not possible. This one should be, in fact, possible. Let me see if I can plan to it. Yeah, it has planned. Oh yeah, so for yeah, no. For some reason it's not updating. Okay, let me close this and open it again. Let me launch the package just another time. Because I don't know if I messed something there, touching where I shouldn't. Because it's going with some delay, so let me restart everything. In fact, I just wanted to show the trajectory ex execution for, for a random, for instance, position with, with one that I have not defined in the movie package, which is also possible, as long as uh, the goal position is feasible. So, for instance, I cannot set a goal position which is here, because it's not physically possible, because that will activate the collision checking from movie, and it would say, hey, this motion is not possible, yeah? Okay, so let me come here. Let me update this. So, let's come here to planning, select the start state, update, 
with the current one. Okay, then now let's go to the goal state and choose a random one, for instance. Let me try to select one which is, let's see if I can find one which is uh, not possible. Well, in fact, I can, I can, of course, I can also set it, let me show it to you. So if, I'm, if I come here, okay, I can come here closer and I can set also manually here from the, from the, from this display window. Let's see if I can, because this is going a bit slow. Because I have many things, arrays, open, the simulation, the stream. So this is going with a bit of delay and it's kind of hard to manage, manage this because movie also uh, is consuming a lot. And it looks like I cannot come closer to this. if I can select it. Okay, yeah, so I can select it here. As you can see now, I can move here. You can see that I'm moving the arm by selecting this end effector ball. Then, for instance, if I say, hey, go to this position. As you can see, the join uh, it becomes red. And if I hit here the, uh, to plan, let me try to plan here, I will get an error. Or I'm expecting to get an error, as you can see here it says failed. And if we come here it says, hey, no motion plan plan found, no execution attempted. So it has tried to find a motion in order to reach this position, but it's not physically possible. Then it says, hey, I, I have not been able to find a motion for this goal position that you are setting. So that's why it fails, yeah? But now let's try to find a, a one which it is uh, actually possible. So for instance, let's try this one, which looks quite uh, regular. Let's plan for this one. Let's see, okay, for, so for this one, it looks like it has find the path. It's showing it to me right now, there you can see it. And let me execute it directly. So I'm going to trust move it. And as you can see, it's going to that goal position. Yeah. So yeah, basically that's it. And unfortunately we, I would like to keep talking, but it's already two hours. So I think we, we are going to need to, to cut it here. Let me see the chat if there is anything Uh, is there a way to visualize the workspace and possible end effector positions? Yeah, so for instance, um, okay, for this question that is doing Panagoitis, here you can uh, select it, define it here in the context. If you come here to the context, you have here uh, at the bottom, you have this workspace section. And in this case, in this case, it's two meters per two meters per per two meters in the x y z axis, yes, being the the center in zero zero zero. So, for instance, you can increase here the workspace or do it uh, more small depending on what what your needs are. But here you can fine tune this and make it bigger or smaller or. So for instance, if we do it, this is going pretty slow in my case. But yeah, well, basically you can define it you, here in, in the context tab, in the workspace section, you can here define and make it bigger, smaller, whatever you want. You can customize your workspace, which will be basically the, all, the pos all the possible positions that your defector can be in. So for instance, if we make this workspace now 
we reduce it to, I don't know, 20 centimeters, many uh, of these end defector positions, like the one we are now, would, wouldn't be accepted. It, they will fail, yes? Answering your question. And Benito Camelas says, I, I like very much your name, by the way. And he says, I won't be there, you are old, but I don't have presupuesto. Yeah, me neither. So, <laughs> if this is your case, my suggestion is, hey, simulations. Until you are able to afford a real one, simulations are super nice. And whenever you have something working in the simulation, you can 100% uh, move it to the to the real robot. There is, of course, a reality gap, but but for now, while you are, you can't afford this real robot, you can work with these simulations. And the good thing of, of working with simulations is that you can have any robot in the world, as, as, lo as long as the, there is a simulation for it. And if there, there isn't a simulation, you can create it yourself. You create the URDF files, the meshes, and whatever. So. Mechatronica says, will be interesting how to use Movit, C++, or Python interface in order to write programs to send initial and final position by speed file. Yes, this is super interesting. And in fact, this is something I, we were, we are, we were going to, to talk uh, now, but already two hours, so we cannot do it right now. This is, in fact, this is done in, in the next unit, in perform motion planning programmatically. So here, uh, we explain how to create Python scripts in this case uh, using the Movit Commander API in order to send commands from a script to move it in order to plan plan uh, trajectories and execute the trajectories and whatever. Let me give a very quick quick preview here. I think we have here you have. I'm not going to load it because it's going to take many time. I'm going to have to end end the the webinar now. But let me just give you a a very quick preview here. Just opening the notebook. And also re remind them that they can keep yeah, of going if they if they want mm. to keep going. They can keep going by following the the tutorial there. On the yeah, website. I mean you will have access. Uh, to the world course, I think it's until, until tomorrow. Until tomorrow, which is the movie day. So if you, if you want to keep doing the course and see the other parts, like for instance this one that I'm going to preview here, which is the next chapter, you can of course you can keep going on your pace. And in, if you have doubts, you can post your doubts in 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 our forum. You can click here in the get help help button and ask us for support, whatever. So as you can see here, the next unit is doing motion uh, planning programmatically. So here you would you will have to start by creating a movie package for a fetch robot, which is a different robot. But you already know how to do this because basically that's what what I have explained it in this in this in this webinar. So you already know how to do this. You you will have to apply this to a fetch robot, and then later you will have to here through scripts, as you can see, we have to create these scripts and you will see how to to request for motion plans to move it from a script, in this case from a Pyth from Python scripts, yes? So if you want, you can keep going at your pace, but for now it's already two hours and we have to leave it here, so yeah. And um, will be interesting, yeah. And Marcus says, thank you for your presentation. All the time we can learn from the console. Best way for ROS and robotics developers. Thank you very much, Marcus. So this is very nice, very nice uh, words from your part. And, and yeah, so that's it. I hope you've learned something new. You have, enjoy, you've enjoyed, you have enjoyed this webinar. And if so, please remember to subscribe to our channel and uh, gives us like and everything gives us love so that we can keep doing <laughs> what we do and keep teaching ROS uh, to, to all the world and to making ROS more accessible to everyone. So each time our community is bigger and bigger. 
and yes see you in the next videos live classes tutorials podcasts whatever so goodbye and keep pushing your ross learning well let me let me in fact i let me um let me say goodbye in a proper way because okay here i'm back again hello so yeah that was all for today and see you in the next videos goodbye and keep pushing your ross learning bye